Hey everyone, uh, my name is Alan. You can find me on GitHub as Alan Orozco if you would like to send me a PR or yell at me for forgetting to review it. Uh, and I would like to talk a little bit about bringing your own JavaScript into AMP pages. Uh, there are billions and billions of AMP documents available across the web, and they share some key traits. They load instantly, they preload while preserving privacy, and they all rely on JavaScript. And we love JavaScript. All our components are written in JavaScript. The AMP core runtime is built in JavaScript. And it is the world's uh, most popular programming language. And historically, so far, we have restricted the use of JavaScript in AMP pages for many reasons. Uh, particularly to ensure that all pages have the same user experience. But however, we now allow JavaScript in AMP. Uh, when we first announced this last year, there were a lot of caveats. We weren't sure if we were even going to be able to pull this off. Uh, but it's ready now, and you can use it. How did we accomplish this? So when you have your AMP document, there's an AMP runtime, and there's also components living in the same page. If we were to introduce custom JavaScript on the document itself, then this opens up a lot of security and user experience concerns. What happens if, if it's too big a script? What happens if it manipulates the DOM too much, or if it does it on occasions where it's not expected? What about the design principles we talked about yesterday. Uh, what happens if the script shifts content or whatever? So the first thing we do is that we put a sandbox around this JavaScript. It keeps it from potentially abusing system resources or accessing other parts of the document. And then we move it to a worker thread. Uh, and this works. The AMP script extension creates a web worker that contains worker DOM, which is something I will talk about in a, in a minute. And it will just run your custom JavaScript. So what is worker DOM? Worker DOM is a very fast DOM manipulation library that we wrote to be run on secondary threads. Uh, workers on the web do not allow access to the DOM. And this is mostly by design. But so that you can actually manipulate the page, worker DOM takes all your uh, reads and writes and posts them to the main page. So in order to transfer between the worker thread and the main document, we built a very efficient array buffer based format to transfer all these operations. Let's say you want to add some text to a document. You create a text node, and then you append the element to the document body. <clears throat> In normal JavaScript, you can just write this, and it will run. But however, what happens with AMP script? So for this first, first operation, we actually create an array that only contains number references. These references uh, point to different parts of the document, or they refer to the ID of the operation that you're trying to run. And you'll notice that we're not even passing strings as part of this array. All strings are registered in a string table so that you don't even have to transfer those at the time you do manipulations or reads. This makes it very, very efficient. So for example, for the second operation, append child, the array buffer would have a slightly different structure with different values. What can you actually do with it? So we're going to build a chat app right now, a very simple one. So let's just write a very simple server with WebSockets. Uh, we can install the WS library on Node. And then we can just receive the messages and pass them through to all clients. Very simple. Don't actually do this in production. It's not very safe. This is merely for illustrative process. Uh, So 
first we started with a base document. Uh, I removed all of the base AMP boilerplate code. You're already familiar with it. It would make a very large slide. Um, and we need to include two extensions, AMP script and AMP form. AMP script will run your script, and AMP form is simply a requirement so that forms on AMP pages are accessible. AMP script can only manipulate the content that's inside its own tag. So we are going to insert all the DOM that we're going to manipulate inside the AMP script tag. It has a source to your code that it will run when it needs to, that it will uh, fetch when it needs to, and it will run it. We're setting a fixed height layout because AMP script doesn't allow DOM manipulations without a user interaction. However, if your AMP script element is under three is, is equal or, or under it, or under 300 pixels high, then it will simply allow you to modify it without user interaction. We're going to create an empty messages list where we're just gonna post all the messages and two empty forms, one to set a username and one to send a message. So for the content of the forms, we're just gonna add an input for the username, a button to join, and the second form is going to have another input for the message content and another button to send. Uh, we start our script just with a session object. It's going to keep track of, let's say, a security token that the server is going to send to us so that we can authenticate as the same user, and the username, just to keep track of it. We start a WebSocket connection from the AMP script, and then we just create two simple functions that will send JSON to the server, one to join as a certain username, and another one to send a message. So far, we haven't written any DOM manipulation. You can write this in any sort of worker thread. It's a session and the shapes of the objects that we're going to send. And what if you want to manipulate the document? Just use DOM APIs as you normally would. Uh, you, can you can select both forms via query selector, Whoops. You can set forms, uh, select forms via query selector, and we're also gonna create a set session function so that we can keep track of the username and uh, of the token that is returned to us by the server. And then once we create that session, we're going to swap the username form with the message form. And simply, when the user hits submit, we're just gonna uh, call our join chat function and uh, prevent the submit event from executing. And then when we want to send a message, we simply add a submit handler to the message form. We send the value in the field, and then we clear the field. When we receive messages from the server, we need to parse them, because they're JSON. If it gave us back a token, we will set our session if we don't have a session, we're not going to display any messages. But if we have a session, we're just going to render them. We're going to select the messages list, and we're going to append the child that we're rendering. To render the incoming message, we just create a simple function. It will create uh, the unordered list child. If it's a join message, it will simply show a message saying that the user has joined. Or if not, we just render a text bubble where we're going to put the message content. And then we simply return it so that it can be appended. <coughs> so you notice that we wrote a lot of direct DOM manipulations. This can be quite complicated over time. Uh, since I, we have, in the AMP team, we have experience with this since all AMP components are written with direct DOM manipulation. Uh, but this is not really the way most modern JavaScript apps are built. So what if you want to use a popular framework? You can do that. Uh, we've made sure that React, Preact, and Vue work well in AMP script. And you can just write your code as you normally would in any of these frameworks. It will simply work. Uh, you can find the full source for the ch ch this chat app on this link. And you can also find a table for what's supported on AMP script. Since we built a library 
to manipulate the DOM, this also reflects the state of the, of the surface of DOM APIs. So it's not full yet. Uh, the DOM is very, very large. So we have this table so you can keep track of what APIs you can use and which what you can't. And uh, there are many areas of contribution opportunities here. Um, let's talk about some trade-offs. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we didn't allow JavaScript originally on AMP because you can just mess with the page any way it wants. So we built, uh, so we added some restrictions to ensure that this doesn't occur. Uh, 50, uh, 150 kibibytes is the maximum size uh, the, all, all the scripts in, a, in an AMP document can be. Um, also remember that this upper bound is based on decompressed resources. Uh, so your compression scheme over the wire doesn't impact this rule. Obviously, if you minify your code, it will, it will impact this. But GZIP or broadly compression will not affect this number. Um, so why 150? So there's a few reasons. We are, we are just being conservative up front. If we find this, that this is too restrictive uh, in the real world, we're going to change it. But so far, we believe 150 kibibytes is plenty. Um, the internet in general is awash with JavaScript, and we just write too much JavaScript. And we're, we're hoping that enforcing this rule uh, will also change how we think about writing and bundling our JavaScript code. And we're also concerned about parse time. Even if, if you're on a fast network, if you're on a slow device, if you're writing a lot of JavaScript, it will stay, take a very long time to execute, even if the page has loaded. As I mentioned before, we have zero mutations without user interaction. So you can do anything after a click, after a form submit, or on similar user gestures. However, it's not going to allow you to touch the DOM without user interaction. Except for those cases, as I mentioned before, where the AMP script component is under 300 pixels high. There's also a limit of five seconds to do DOM manipulations after a user interaction. The goal here is to help prevent unwanted layout changes if the user has not interacted with the page. Uh, we don't want the content to shift. We want the page to be stable. So you only have a five second window to do this manipul these manipulations. However, what happens if you do a fetch and it takes longer than five seconds to execute, to, uh, to respond? Then in this case, uh, once, after, once after a fetch happens, we reset this time counter. So you can expect the five seconds time window after your fetch has already started to respond. I, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, these slides are the other way around. Sorry about that. Uh, I also would like to talk about asynchronous computed layout, which is also a difference between the normal DOM APIs and the DOM APIs in the AMP script world. So in normal JavaScript land, you have APIs like get bounding client rect, which will return just a description of the rect rectangle of an element box, like its position and size. This is, okay. So the way this, this happens on the main thread, you just ask for it, and it will be returned quickly, synchronously. However, as some of you may be familiar with this, this is actually a write operation. Because when you get a bounding client rect, the, the browser actually needs to recalculate the entire layout. So yes, it is a synchronous call, but it actually blocks the document while it's happening. So what happens in the worker? Well, you have an HTML development and you want to get the client rect. So you request it from the, from the development in the main thread. It will create the client rect and then it will return it to the thread. You will notice that this is asynchronous. This has a lot of, a lot of advantages. It's not only a requirement because it's a worker and it has to be asynchronous anyway, but this means that we can actually batch all, this, uh, all these reads so that they occur at the same time and they don't cause uh, unnecessary recalculations to occur. So the normal API 
is get bounding client wrecked. What do you do in our script world? You just await get bounding client wrecked async. And if you don't like async await, or if you're writing older JavaScript, that's just a promise that you can just add a callback to once it's resolved. What can AMP script do? I would like to talk about a few demos that we've built and that we've seen around the web. It's loading. <laughs> uh, so this, it might be possible that no GIFs will load in this demo, so I apologize for that. Um, we partnered with the Washington Post to create an interactive article uh, that wasn't possible to do with normal AMP documents. We actually needed to write JavaScript for it. It's a very cool article. I'm sorry it's not displaying, but it has all, sort of, all sorts of graphs that you can interact with and that, they, that will change rendering. Oh, this one did want to load. Uh, you can also build full apps on this. You can, as the chat demo, you can just put everything inside an AMP script tag. Uh, for example, I built this MySpace glitter text generator and I built it in vanilla JavaScript, and I, and I ported it to AppScript, script, and it was really easy. I just had it to add a build step to compile it to what AppScript script expected. And it is a shared code base. So that means that I can output a non-AMP version for all the things that AMP doesn't allow you to do with AMP script and an AMP version, simply by building it differently. This one didn't load. Uh, this one was a very cool checkout flow. You'll have to trust me on that. And we were curious, like, how fast is this in the real world? We used a popular demo called dbmon to show the update rate that can be achieved. This is not very relevant to most UIs. You won't really mess with thousands of DOM elements on one operation. But this is actually very, very fast. And you can use this today. You can just use the AMP script component, load the extension, and write your own JavaScript. That's all. Thanks.